What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In our first full week back to work, we saw Apple push out new beta software, but still no public release to patch up all of the issues we have with iOS 16.2. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about the latest iOS 16.3 beta that just got released, along with an update on 16.2, and if we're ever gonna get that 16.2.1 update or not. And then after covering the software side of things, we're going to discuss new rumors on the Air AirPods Lite and AirPods Max 2, iPhone 15 and Apple AR VR headset expectations, iOS 17 news, which you might not like, why the iPhone 16 Pro will be the one that's worth waiting on, crash detection causing big issues yet again, and much more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so let's start by talking about the latest beta of iOS 16.3, which is beta 2. Now, the big change in this was really just something pretty minor. If we go into our settings, emergency SOS, you will notice a big difference in the verbiage here on multiple different sections. So call withhold is now call withhold and release. Call with five presses is now call with five button presses. And then countdown sound has been renamed to call quietly. And I showed that in my what's new video earlier in the week, but really that was the only thing that had been changed in beta two that I was able to see. However, there is also a fix for an Apple music bug that's been around since August of last year. And this is a bug where songs would play the clean version rather than the explicit version. And you can see in this email, Apple did say that this has been addressed and it should be fixed in iOS 16.3 beta 2. Now this second beta also addresses a bug with the astronomy wallpapers when you have full screen album artwork on the lock screen. I know it's very specific and shout out to Reddit for even bringing this to my attention. All right, so we have our astronomy wallpaper right here. If we tap on the album artwork to bring up the full view of that and then we swipe to go to the home screen, you can see that the animation is still there along with when we go back. So now if we go to the home screen or the lock screen, that animation is back now for whatever reason in previous versions it was bugged out and there would be no animation. And something else that I mentioned in my What's New video had to do with Private Relay. And when you turn that off, how there's no cancel button anymore. And that was actually there in beta one, but I just noticed it in beta two. However, that might actually be a bug. So the more I thought about this, I was like, why would you be forced to turn it off? You know, what if you accidentally tapped on that? There should be a cancel button there. So I think this actually is a bug. And I think we will see the revival or the return of a cancel button down there below as a third option. And then the physical security keys, of course, is going to be one of the headlining features for iOS 16.3 when it eventually releases. However, in beta 2, there is nothing changed here as far as adding the security keys, you know, any of the verbiage, everything is the same so far. The Maps application just added a new parking feature, which allows you to see and buy parking straight from the application. So this was added in partnership with Spot Hero and provides parking information for more than 8,000 locations across the US and Canada and I would assume this will be coming to other countries later as well. So once you go to a notable area like a stadium or a monument, if you tap on the three dots right here for more, you will see that we have a new option there for parking. Now keep in mind, this is not just for iOS 16.3. This is a server side push by Apple. So this is available for all devices running iOS 16. And you can see here, right once you tap on that, it will take you to Spot Hero for that location. You can see what's available. You could choose the time when you enter after, when you exit before and you can see the pricing and everything, how many spots are left. You get all the information there straight from the Maps application, which is very convenient. Now, as far as iOS 16.2 goes, honestly, at this point, it's kind of a mess. And the weird thing about 16.2 is it didn't really start out as a mess. There were not really too many issues when 16.2 first launched. You guys know this. You watch my videos. I see your comments really no issues were there when 16.2 first launched. However, you know, over the past, like I'd say two to three weeks, I've seen a huge influx in issues on iOS 16.2. Now, one of the big ones has to do with iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max users that have noticed a really weird horizontal lines bug 
on their display when they boot up their phone. And I had seen this before on Reddit and you know Mac Rumors forums, but you know I've been seeing it in comments now, and it's kind of getting a little bit more widespread. But now, according to Mac Rumors, Apple has acknowledged this issue, and they did say that they are investigating it and that it is a software-based issue. So that's good news for those that thought it was hardware-based and had to you know replace their device, and it came back. It's not a hardware issue, it appears. It does seem to be a software issue. And Apple describes this issue in that recent memo as iPhone 14 Pro customers report that when they power on or unlock their iPhone, they briefly see horizontal lines flash across the screen. So it is very good that Apple is now aware of this. And since 16.3 is not going to be released for at least another month, I would expect this fix to be included in a 16.2.1 update. And we'll talk about when to expect that here in a minute. But aside from that bug, there are quite a few other issues as well. Of course, the big one is related to the home application and how pretty much all of my devices are still stuck on configuring all this time later. So Apple will re-push out that home architecture upgrade most likely in 16.2.1, maybe at the latest in 16.3, but we'll see. But going away from all of the negative, 16.2 has still been good for the most part. I mean, I think for most people, 16.2 is fine. Of course, we don't really hear about all the good. We tend to hear and you know pay attention to all of the bad that's going on. But 16.2 has been great for me. I really have had no issues at all. And I've actually seen a nice improvement in shortcut automations. And you know, I use these every single day i have multiple different types of triggers location time you know based on my home devices all of that and none of them have failed once on 16.2 and that's the first time i can say that about i think any ios 16 version you know i've used shortcut automations a lot and they have improved greatly here in 16.2 if you have a windows computer the apple music and apple tv applications are now available in the microsoft store for those running windows 11. now these are not perfect yet they're not going to work as expected yet because this is just a preview version the final version will come later but this is great and it's perfect for those who hated itunes like i did even though i don't use windows anymore every time i use a windows device I I just hate using iTunes for whatever reason. So you should see a nice improvement in how your iPhone is managed on Windows along with you're actually going to have Apple Music and the legit TV app now. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. And let's start with the beta versions. So next up is going to be iOS 16.3 beta 3 and that could come next week however it's not going to come on monday because monday is a holiday in the u.s so if we are going to see a beta 3 next week it will be on most likely the 17th or the 18th now there is also a possibility of apple skipping a week however you know i would expect multiple betas for 16.3 so i think it is likely to be next week but i would also not be surprised to see them skip a week one last time and then after that will be on a weekly release schedule so we'll have to see what apple does it's always tricky right after the new year and then as far as the final release for ios 16.3 according to mark german he says that this is coming in february to early Early March so at some point in February into early March is a possibility to see that 16.3 version released however you know I don't know I find it hard to believe we're gonna have to wait all the way until March to see 16.3 especially if we don't skip next week uh, you know I think it's contingent on if we skip next week or not so if we do skip a week I could see it coming in March however if we go straight to beta 3 next week I say there's no way that we wait until March to get 16.3 so Next week is going to tell a lot about when to expect the final release of 16.3, in my opinion. And then for iOS 16.2.1, a lot of people were disappointed that we didn't see that this week. However, I just don't think Apple was ready yet. They're still working on a fix for the horizontal lines bug and all of that. So I would not expect 16.2.1 to be ready until next week at the earliest. So we could see it next week. Again, it's not gonna come on the 16th because that is a holiday, but we could see it anywhere from the 17th through the 19th and if not next week it is also possible to be on that final week that final full week right there of january but we'll have to wait and see but i would suspect that 16.2.1 will come next week just because these issues at hand right now in 16.2 are pretty major i mean it's breaking the home application a lot of people are having visual issues that they think their iphone 14 pro is broken you know so i think pretty major issues are going on right now which leads me to believe that a 16.2.1 should come 
next week. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's kick things off by talking about the rumor that had Twitter in absolute shambles earlier this week. And that was about a touchscreen MacBook Pro. According to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, this might actually become a reality sooner than we think. So according to this new report, Apple is working on adding touchscreens to its Mac computers, a move that would defy long held company orthodoxy and embrace an approach that Steve Jobs once called ergonomically terrible. Based on current internal deliberations, Apple could launch its first touchscreen Mac in 2025 as part of a larger update to the MacBook Pro. As part of the MacBook Pro revamp, Apple is also planning to move its displays to OLED, which would offer improved brightness and color and will also come to the iPad Pro in the first half of 2024. And for those asking, well, isn't a touchscreen MacBook just an iPad? And the answer is no. This report actually mentions that Apple is not actively working to combine the iPad and the Mac operating systems together. So this is very interesting. And I am very curious to hear your thoughts on this. Do you actually want a touchscreen MacBook Pro? please let me know in a comment down below because me personally, I would not use that at all. I don't think I would like a touchscreen MacBook Pro at all, but let me know your thoughts down there. And now let's shift over to Apple's upcoming mixed reality headset, which has been all of the rage, all of the talk of the town over the past few months, and we're finally approaching a reveal, hopefully. According to German, 2023 will be a very quiet year for Apple aside from this headset, which he says will be announced this spring right before the Worldwide Developers Conference. He said this, with the current plan, Apple could introduce the device to consumers, likely under the name Reality Pro, and then get developers up to speed on its software features in June. On this timeline, the company would then ship the product later in the fall of 2023. The report then details what to expect in terms of Apple hardware for 2023 and beyond, and it goes as follows. The M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros are expected in the first half of this year. The M2 Ultra Mac Pro is coming also sometime this year. The larger iMac Pro is not expected this year. The 15-inch MacBook Air is coming this year. It's expected this year, I should say. The iPad, now moving on to the iPad, don't expect the larger screen iPads in 2023. And he says that we're only expecting minor changes this year. And as far as the redesigned iPad Pro, that's expected in the first half of 2024. And those are gonna be the first iPads with OLED displays. And any updates to the iPad mini, iPad Air, and entry-level iPad will not be anything more than a spec bump if they arrive at all. And then nothing major has been planned for the AirPods or Apple Watch, and no new Apple TV is coming this year. However, a new HomePod is expected later this year with the S8 chip, an updated touch control panel on top, and a lower price. So Apple's focus in 2023 will be on the XROS operating system for this headset along with iOS 16 fixes. Now this report also mentions that iOS 17, which is codenamed Dawn, may have fewer major changes than originally planned. And this is mainly because Apple's focus is just simply shifting over to XROS and that headset. So it looks like iOS 17 might be more of a bug fix and stability update, which is fine by me. You know, that's technically what iOS 15 was, and it still had tons of new features and changes. So even though we're not expecting major, major features, we're still going to have a ton of changes to cover, of course, here on the channel. But nonetheless, it is always still disappointing when we hear that the next major iOS version is not going to be as major as we were hoping. So with only the headset and the iPhone expected to be exciting this year, let's talk a bit more about that upcoming iPhone 15, more specifically the 15 Pro. Because according to Ming-Chi Kuo, this phone will definitely have those solid state buttons, aka the non-clicky actual buttons, more so the software-based buttons like we have on the home button for the iPhone S. E and like we had like on the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8's home button was a solid state button. So we're expecting that now as the volume rockers on the side of the iPhone 15 Pro. So he said this on Twitter, my latest survey indicates that high-end iPhone 15 models will feature solid state buttons and will equip with additional taptic engines to simulate the feel of physical buttons, force feedback and Cirrus Logic will be the primary supplier. So we've heard this rumor now multiple times and twice actually from Quo. So this seems very likely and I'm pretty excited about it, especially when you add that with the likelihood of a titanium frame on the 15 Pro as well. However, the iPhone 16 Pro might be the real upgrade you've been waiting on. And the reason I say that is because it could be the first iPhone to get the long awaited 
under display face ID. Now we've heard this rumor before, but a new report from the elect reaffirms this by saying that Apple will move the components required for face ID authentication directly under the iPhone's display in 2024. And it says when not in use, the true depth cameras for face ID will not be visible under the display, which will appear seamlessly contiguous with the surrounding screen area. Now the hole in the display for the front facing camera is going to remain on the iPhone 16 Pro, but the overall display area and sense of immersion will be improved. And once Apple has implemented the under display face ID, they will move on to adopt the under panel camera, which would eliminate all of the display cutouts that we currently have on the iPhone, AKA our dream iPhone. So expect to hear more about this in the coming months and next year, but it does seem likely that at least the face ID components will be under display with the actual camera going under display at a later date. And then an update on those cheaper AirPods that we talked about last episode. It seems that my price prediction might actually be a reality because Ming-Chi Kuo just recently said this about the AirPods Lite and the next generation AirPods Max. The next generation AirPods will likely begin mass shipments in the second half of 2024 or the first half of 2025, including more affordable AirPods with Apple targeting a price of $99 and new AirPods Max, which will be assembled by Luxshare ICT and Hong Tang. But for 2023, don't expect anything major, if anything at all, when it comes to AirPods. And then finally, let's discuss how crash detection is still completely broken and causing major issues around the U.S. So this latest instance comes from Minnesota, where emergency responders are legit telling residents to disable this feature due to the overwhelming amount of false alarms. So just last month, the Stearns County Emergency Center received an automated call that said the owner of this iPhone was in a severe car crash and is not responding to their phone. And of course, it did give them the coordinates, their location coordinates. But when the dispatcher called back, it went to voicemail. So a sheriff's deputy explored the location, but did not see any sign of a crash or emergency. And since then, Stearns County has received seven false crash calls in the past couple of weeks involving snowmobilers and downhill skiers. And in the case of a skier, emergency responders were able to track that person down after about four hours. But by that time, the individual said, geez, I don't know, I think I might have fallen, but I'm not really sure. And then emergency responders in other countries have reported the same issue lately and one false call actually came from someone who was wearing an apple watch while shoveling snow that's it that was the emergency so both cook and stearns counties have encouraged residents in the past couple of weeks to turn off the automatic emergency call features when taking part in activities such as snowmobiling or skiing or when it isn't needed so yeah even though we've had multiple fixes for these false triggers they still remain. This feature is still fundamentally broken. And like I predicted months ago, I think this is going to take much longer than expected for Apple to actually fix because there's a thin line between, you know, reducing false triggers, you know, and then also not triggering crash detection when you're actually in a crash. That would be a much worse scenario when it doesn't work when it needs to. So I guess false triggers are better than it not working when it needs to, but still Apple has a lot of figuring out to do here. So there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some updates on the latest iOS 16 changes. So as always, if you appreciate this video and this Apple weekly series, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's episode. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Oh,